Hi everyone, this is Sean from Emerald City Trolls and I've got a special treat today. So what we have here is a pack of the Spectral Chaos uh, set to spoil today. Um, and so this, if you haven't heard yet, uh, is Spectral Chaos is like a real, actual designed uh, magic set designed by Barry Reich um, that was never produced. It was designed way back in the early days, but it, it, uh, it ended up inspiring a bunch of stuff in later editions. Um, and there is a spoiler out, out there for it. And so um, a guy by the name of Micah, who uh, also goes by Raging River um, as his like, magic handle, um, went and uh, got the spoiler and then made up these cool sort of uh, for fun cards just to sort of like see what it might have been like if these cards actually were ever printed and existed. And so he put a ton of effort into this. Um, this is actually the first I ever heard of Spectral Chaos was like discovering that he had, he had done this crazy passion project. Um, and so, uh, you know, he sent, he was kind enough to send the trolls a pack to spoil. So, so here we go. Um, I guess just one more note about these, this, these are not real magic cards. This isn't like a project endorsed by wizards or Hasbro. Um, these aren't for sale. Um, this is just something that, that Micah did for fun out of his passion to just see what, what this set might've been like, had it actually been realized. So without further ado, let's get into these cards. So let's see first here is a this is an illusion it's called an illusion blue enchantment let me see if i can hold it up to the camera and get get it to show there for you the glare is not great let me turn off the light here we'll try again there we go so there we go illusion there's that cool art it's like a jellyfish coming down it's an enchantment Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has cumulative upkeep. Pay one colorless mana or one life. And it has a note on it. Chaos history. Very liked cumulative upkeep. An ability introduced in Ice Age. <clears throat> Decomposition from Mirage and mana chains from Weatherlight are, were auras with similar uh, with a similar design. So cool. So the art is pretty sweet. It's by uh, one Lothar Dietrich. Um, very or uh, ri um, Micah was careful to get art that was uh, freely available, or in some cases, he actually, I think, purchased rights to use it just so that he felt good about what he was doing with it. But there we go. There's our first card, Illusion. Introducing cumulative upkeep into old school, which is cool. Um, next card is a forest. Um, that is cool. So basic lands were included. Uh, as they were in many of the original sets that were sort of designed to be standalone, like uh, the core set, as well as Ice Age. And I guess this set falls in, in sort of the same category as those. And focus is really great. Yay, technology. Anyways, this is a pretty cool looking forest here. I feel like there might be a forest that looks kind of like this in like like Invasion or Visions or some one of these other later sets that like pre-modern middle school sets. But this is cool. It's a good looking forest by uh, Dark Work X is the artist. And uh, the other thing I guess I can talk about here, the feel. These cards feel great. They feel, you know, they're on real card stock. You can bend them and they don't bend. They kind of snap back. Um, you know, they're a little, a little slicker than a real magic card. Um, you know, if you've handled any of the like sort of high-end pr proxies or counterfeit cards. Um, they feel kind of like those. Of course, these are not um, trying to pretend to be real magic cards. There's the back in case you want a close-up of that. It's a cool art there too. Um, and so yeah, so that's a forest. Next is Crimson Acolyte. Uh, creature, Cleric Shaman, one colorless, two white mana to summon this guy. Or gal, as it may be. There she is. Um, she has protection from red. And an ability. Pay a red and tap. Target creature gains protection from red until end of turn. So it's kind of like a, a mother of runes, but just for red. And also has protection from red itself. Chaos history. A similar design of the same name would be later released in Invasion. So, yeah, so they did get a card like this out the door. You can see that's where... Again, this Spectral Chaos set is influencing future sets of Magic cards. Um, I'll try to get pictures of these cards, too, and post them somewhere along with the 
video here just so that you can take a look at these sweet arts because they are really cool here. This one's by John William Waterhouse, who is a, uh, a known artist. Um, that's the person whose art you can find in galleries. Cool. Uh, it's a 2-2, by the way, also, in addition to being uh, immune from red spells. It has two power, two toughness. All right, next is Blessed Land. Blessed Land is an enchantment. There we go. Costs one white. And that looks like it's a uh, an angel blessing some land there. Quite appropriate art from Stefan Keller. Enchant Land. Enchanted Land has indestructible, cannot be enchanted other than by Blessed Land, and cannot be the target of enchantments. Whenever Enchanted Land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one colorless mana. Wow. That is interesting. So this is a ramp spell in white, um, which is an effect that we don't, I don't think in the old school at least, have in white. Um, aside from artifacts, that's a kind of awesome. Um, and also, so the land becomes indestructible, which can be super relevant. Um, you can stick this on a factory, for example, and you get... People have done that in old school where you put like consecrate land on your factory and now you have this indestructible creature. Well, here you don't just get that. You also get um, that land can't be enchanted. So if they were going to put, I don't know, blight or something on it, they can't do that. Um, and you also get the ramp effect. You get that extra mana when you tap it. So like this is actually a mana neutral card the turn you play it if you, if you sort of want it to be. Wow, this seems really good. Um, this is a card I would play. Um, cool. Wow. So yeah, this is, this is actually a pretty solid, especially, uh, the fact that it gets indestructible is also great. Cause like if it's, a, you know, even in a four strip format or whatever, normally you'd be worried about sticking, you know, you stick wild growth on a land or something like that and it just gets stripped. Well, now they can't do that. Um, they, the, the land is indestructible. Cool. That is awesome. I like last land. That's a good one. All right. <clears throat> Next. Deadly Inflation. All right. There is an, another enchantment. This one is uh, too black, too colorless to cast. It's got some sort of creepy scarecrow guy on there. There we go. It's uh, by, I'm going to mess this name up, um, uh, Zidslaw Ber uh, Beksinski. Zidslaw Be Beksinski. Zidslaw Beksinski. All right. Spells your opponent's. Uh, spells cost your opponents an additional two green mana to cast for each green mana symbol in their casting cost. So, okay, so this is instead of for, for, for instead of something costing one green mana to cast, it will cost three green mana, an additional two green mana. So, Llanowar Elves cost three green mana. Um, so, this is like Gloom, but against green, and also requires colored mana to be spent uh, so it doesn't make things cost it only makes them cost two more rather than three more but it has to be green mana which against any kind of multicolored deck is gonna screw them over and even in in things like uh you know like those low to the ground mono green decks um just taxing them that extra mana can really slow them down the whole idea of those decks is to just deploy a large number of cheap threats fast and suddenly they're not so cheap anymore whirling dervish costs six green mana for example um, so that is, that's cool. The other thing I could imagine doing with this is putting it in a, a um, sleight of mind deck. So you change green to red, and then this says spells, your, uh, spells cost your opponents an additional two green mana to cast for each red mana symbol in their casting cost. So lightning bolt costs red, green, green. And if they don't have green, green, they just flat out can't play that spell. Um, so obviously anything with sleight of mind you're playing, or sleight of hand you're playing like uh, sleight of mind. We're we're playing like a casual deck, but this is that's a pretty sweet thing to be able to do. I mean, some people that's just going to be game over. They won't be able to cast any spells at all. Um, cool, that's awesome. That's a neat little neat little effect there. And you can see again where like this theme in spectral chaos of messing with the color pie and. Um, you know, black and green are sort of their adversarial colors, and so there's this new adversarial effect here, which is cool. All right, next is Grenade. This is a sorcery. It costs three red. It has somebody on a, a, a pyromage of some sort on 
the art there. We can get focus. Well, close enough. There we go. There you go. All right. So grenade sorcery. Choose three target creatures and or players. Grenade does three damage to the first target, one damage to the second target, and one damage to the third target. And the art is by Enrique uh, Mesaguer. So, cool. So this is like a, one of these classic red burn spells that like tantalizes you with the possibility of card advantage. Like you could just imagine shooting down three creatures with this and, and just really uh, blowing someone out. Um, and you can, of course, hit your opponent in the face, too, so you can always, like, hit them for three and then kill their two lions or whatever, and, like, that's a, that's a, that's a lot to do with one card for three mana. Um, the challenge is, it's a sorcery speed thing, um, and then it's also, like, there will be times where you, this is literally uncastable, like, you can't, there aren't sufficient targets. Maybe you have to hit yourself for one in order to hit your opponent for three and, like, one of their dudes for one or something. But either way, this is like you can definitely see how the design from the design standpoint, this card is like experimenting with this idea that later would show up in things like Cone of Flame and stuff, um, where it's these red spells that have this kind of um, this, this downside of maybe sometimes they're not great, especially if your opponent's not playing any creatures. But the upside is just being able to have this card that just devastates your opponent, like, you know, the sort of more obvious versions of this that are in old school are like falling star or like earthquake or some of these spells where you can just, you can just burn, you can take out multiple creatures with one burn spell and, um, and pull way ahead that way. So cool. So grenade. All right, next up an Island. Okay. So our second land here is the coveted Island spectral chaos Island. There we go. There's a nice little paradise sunset land to go hang on on that looks like a good place to go to me and these covid election everything else 2020 is a shit show times that would be a nice place to go hang out play some cards with some friends um the arts by david mark here and uh you know it does what uh all the best lands do it taps for blue mana so there you go island um next up psionic surge Sorcery, three colorless and a blue to cast. And if we can get the focus there, this is a person uh, kind of shooting some blasts out of their fingers, it looks like. Some power blasts, they're screaming a little bit. Doesn't look like they're, you know, they're having fun, I guess. Psionic Surge is a sorcery. It deals five damage to you and any to any target and three damage to you. So this is like your Psionic Blast plus plus. Um, you know, five damage now. Now you're talking about a spell that can take out um, uh, sh uh, Shivens and Jusums and Ernies and sort of these 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 guys that can be problematic for damage-based removal decks. It only costs four mana. You take one of their guys out, or of course you point this at the at their dome and you just hit them for five. You only have to do that four times to win a game on average. Um, and so, um, you know, taking three damage yourself, that's a lot, you know, like if you're, if you're racing another burn deck, you don't want to do this and, and, uh, fall too far behind doing it. But, uh, but against any kind of other deck, or if you're ahead on life, this, this is just a, a killer spell. This is probably one of these things that goes, if you're playing like the, the Seth chef school of burn decks and playing like, you know, four bolts, four psionic blasts and three or four chain lightnings. This might be something you stick in, you know, you put one or two of those in there and use that um, just for extra reach and extra burn. Um, sorcery speed's a little, you know, like that's that's a that's a downgrade relative to Psionic Blast, but, you know, it's still five damage for four mana. Uh, it's better than Fireball at that rate. So cool, Psionic Surge. All right, next up, El Timtor's Charm is another enchantment. That has some pretty sweet art here. Kind of high fantasy, classic renaissance feels on that one. Three colorless and a green. The art is by Eleanor Fortescue Brickdale. By the way, Sonic Surge's art, that was uh, by Prometheus, is who that came from. Um, but on the El Timtor's Charm is an enchant creature. 
Uh, three colorless and a green. Until end of turn, enchanted creature gets. If you spend a blue mana, minus one, minus O. Oh. White mana, plus O, oh, plus one. Red mana, plus one, plus zero. Black mana, minus zero, minus one. So this is like a um, like a build your own sort of creature enchantment that does what you need it to do. It can be holy armor. It can be fire breathing. It can kind of uh, you can you can um, pump up your own guys on it if you're in red and, and white. If you're in blue and black, you put this on your opponent's creatures. You can you can uh, you know shave down their power, which can make it tricky for them to attack favorably. Or you can just take up you know subtract from their toughness, kill them outright, or make them die to um, something that ordinarily wouldn't have killed them. Kind of just turns this creature, if you cast on your opponent's creature and you have mana open, um, it makes them have to make some choices uh, and gives you some options. Now it's four mana creature enchantment to do all of that. Um, it's, it's, a five, it's also five colors, which again, this is kind of the spectral chaos theme of like messing with the color pie. So... Um, there, there's uh, this is probably some card you could put into you know as a one or two of into an enchantress deck uh, just for fun. Uh, it's kind of a utility spell. So, all right, next up, rampage. Oh boy, that looks like a storm of piranhas coming to get you there. Piranhas or eels or something. Uh, that's by uh, Ryman Bertrams. The art there. Rampage is an instant. Costs red and green. Attacking creatures get plus one plus zero and trample until end of turn. So this is like uh, an early version of the kind of combat tricks that we would eventually see be common in red and green, um, uh, especially red plus green spells, where where you get this pump effect and you gain trample. And the idea is you you just kind of like you attack with a bunch of dudes and your opponent does all this combat math and figures out how to block properly and then you just you cast this kind of spell. Uh, pump up all your guys by an extra power, throw all their math out the window, give trample to some of your guys. Maybe they, they tried to chump one of your 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 guys. They chump your Shivan Dragon with a Scrib Sprites, and then you just go boom, plus one, plus oh, and trample, and I'll fire breathe them up some more, and, and you just kind of blow them out that way, win the game. So this is like a classic red-green combat trick. Maybe this is like the first time we've seen this, th this type of thing um, in the design for a set. So cool. All right, next up is a checklist the uncommons um part two so that's a big list there i guess if you were to want to get the complete set or find all these cards this is uh going to tell you what else is out there what to go look for all right next up we have death streak death streak is a sorcery uh it costs x and black uh, appropriately horrifying um, art there. That's pretty pretty scary there. And just just past Halloween season here, so maybe it's all right. That's by Francis Bacon. He is a famous uh, Renaissance man. Um, among other things, he is credited with coming up with the scientific method, and he also painted the art to this card. And he's a philosopher and did a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, X uh, X color or X mana plus and an X to cast this. X is equal to the number of creatures on the battlefield that you don't control as you cast this spell. Death Streak does two damage to each creature. Whenever a creature dealt damage by Death Streak dies this turn, you gain one life. Okay, so this is so there's a few so this card X is the number of creatures that you don't control as you cast this spell. So your opponent's got three creatures, X is three. It's going to do two damage to all creatures, yours included. And if any of those creatures die this turn, you gain one life. So you can use this to wipe out your opponent's team of weenies. You can use this to soften a bunch of your opponent's creatures up so they've already got two damage on them and attack into them. Maybe killing, killing them if they would have otherwise been able to block and survive. Um, you gain the life, which is a nice sort of side effect. Um, in black, there's lots of ways to spend your life. So, uh, you know, you can you can play greed or you can play Jusums or um, things like that. Um, and this will let you um, gain some life so you can turn that into other advantages later. So as a sweeper in black, it has the potential to, to go in, you know, at least as a sideboard card. Like I, I could easily see this card going into the sideboard for, for like mono black. 
um, or even just a deck that's a control deck that has some heavy black um, elements to it. Um, so cool. All right, Death Streak, good sweeper there. Next up, Mimic. All right, this one's got a lot of text on it. Here is the art. This is a creature that costs four colorless and three blue. So it's 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 got to do a lot here. It's a shapeshifter. You may have Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of any non-creature land or non-creature artifact on the battlefield, except it's also still a blue 2-4 creature and has, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may have this creature become a copy of target non-creature land or non-creature artifact, except it's also still a blue 2-4 creature and has this ability. So this is like Vesuvian Doppelganger, but for, for lands and artifacts. So you can copy <coughs> whatever seems the most relevant at any given time on your side or your opponent's side, and that will, and it's a 2-4 creature, which is good and bad, I guess. So it's good because you can still attack with the thing if you, like, copy a, maybe you copy a Black Vice with this thing, and then you also get to attack with it as a 2-4. Um, of course, that means it can be killed by creature removal, so your copy of the Black Vice um, doesn't stick around because uh, it gets swords or whatever. Um, the art on this, actually, I just realized, I thought this was like a person like a, with some horns coming out, but it's actually the body of the person, it looks like. It's like superimposed on the face. Those aren't horns. That's the, uh, the body coming out. That's cool. That's pretty sweet. Anyways, that's Stefan Keller's art. Um, so yeah, so it's a 2-4, copies artifacts, copies creatures. Um, seven mana is a bit steep. Maybe you play this this uh, this thing with Eureka. I don't know. Um, but obviously the ability is powerful. There's plenty of good artifacts to copy. Plenty of good lands to copy in old school. Uh, I don't think it ever makes sense to copy a factory. But maybe it would. You can pump other factories that way. I don't know. Um, but it also um, will have summoning sickness. Since it stays a creature. Even when it comes into play. So if you choose a land you can't use it that turn. Um but yeah, I mean, there's so many artifacts that are that are good to copy. Um, there certainly could be something useful to do with a mimic. All right, next up we have convert land. So it's another enchantment. It's an aura. There's a person uh, gazing out over the their domains there. Uh, one colorless, one white, two blues. Enchant land. Gain control of enchanted land. Sure. Um, control magic for lands. Uh, chaos history for this one too. Uh, Monocolored auras like this were released in Ice Age as Conquer and in Onslaught as Annex Blue. Yeah, those are two other spells that you steal up some of your opponent's land with. Um, the arts by Sarah Richter. So yeah, so I mean this is like seems like you know equal in in premise to to uh, control magic and steal artifact. The relevance of stealing a land can be huge. Um, you minus one their their mana supply and you plus one your mana supply at the same time so that can be a pretty nice um, tempo swing um, it comes at four mana so it's already so it's not gonna it's not gonna help you in the early game like ramp something out um, what it seems more helpful as is just like cementing resource denial so you just you just like um, you know, you're, maybe if your opponent is, is a land drop behind you or something and you get to steal one of uh, their lands and you go from four lands up to five and they go from three lands down to two and suddenly there's this big mana advantage that you've got on top of them. Um, it definitely seems like a powerful, you know, it's a powerful effect and it's, its value is basically dependent on, like, the value of stealing certain lands. Like, if you can steal their library, like... You can get two libraries this way. Actually, that's that's pretty pretty dirty. If you can get two libraries going, that's uh, that's a big deal. Um, stealing factories seems great. Um, you know, stealing stealing any uh, dual lands that have colors. You can cut them off with some colors. Maybe that seems good. So there's a ton you can do with convert land. It's probably something that would be playable in old school, um, at least. And so cool, convert land. All right, uh, Sarah Richter art. I uh, guess I didn't, I don't know if I mentioned that. Last card, here we go. And it's foil. Ooh, this is a land. This is called Barry's Land. 
Barry, of course, being Barry Reich, you can see kind of the foiling on this thing. Like, very legit-looking foiling. That's how foiled cards looked, you know, in the old... The old there's, no, there's no comment on it, but it's got the right kind of shimmer to it. All right, let's see what this thing does. Basic land. That's it. There's no rules text. This is actually a huge chaos history text, so let's read that. Um, chaos history. Mark Rosewater was fascinated by Barry Reich's concepts in spectral chaos relating to the effects of controlling different basic land types. The concept was tested in several sets and eventually became the domain mechanic in Invasion. Mauro wanted to find a way to boost the mechanic with a colorless basic land, nicknamed Barry's Land, by Watsi R&D, as a nod to Reich's concept. The concept was almost implemented in Invasion, then Planeshift, then Conflux. It would take over 20 years for the concept to finally be released in 2016 with Oath of the Gatewatch's new basic land, Waste. And that's a Stefan Killer art as well. So this thing is a basic land which means you can fetch it out with anything that wants to find basic lands, like, um, like um, what's the, the green spell, is it um, Rampant Growth, I think. Um, anything that fetches basic lands will get this. Other spells might care about counting the number of basic lands you have. I think that when they released Waste in Oath of the Gatewatch, there were some cards that did stuff like that. Um, it's not a non-basic land so like blood moon doesn't affect this it will still be a berry's land and tap for colorless mana um the five basic land types island um uh forest plains swamp mountain those are parts of the rules of the game so you can't do something like um um uh, slight of slight of mind the somebody's um forest into a berry's land to turn it into colorless land um that's not part of that's not allowed but um berry's land itself does count as a basic land for anything that does care about your basic land count so all right cool so that's the last card in the pack um the last thing we have is there is some errata that was included with these cards just to make sure we know how they work so let me open that and just see what it says so first is a uh, errata for illusion. Um, if a permanent has multiple instances of cumulative upkeep, each triggers separately. However, the age counters are not connected to any particular ability. Each cumulative upkeep ability will count the total number of age counters on the permanent at the time that ability resolves. Ah, okay. So that's a good note. We didn't talk about how cumulative upkeep works, but the way it works is if a card has cumulative upkeep, you put an age counter on it. Um, in your upkeep every turn and then you pay its upkeep cost for each age counter so if you were to put illusion onto two copies of illusion onto some creature um, they would have sort of this double age counter effect where you'd add one age counter uh, wait you add two age counters in their upkeep and then they have to pay the upkeep cost for both of those it's a separate ability so they would end up paying two colorless or two um, or two life twice each in their first upkeep and then four colorless or four life twice in their second upkeep and so on um, and or if it's already a creature that has a different cumulative upkeep you stack those effects so anyways i think i did that right but uh you can note in the comments if i screwed it up but anyways that's the note for that all right blessed land uh the additional mana is not an ability of the land and is not something the land can produce um so that's relevant. There are some cards that care, like Felwar Stone and stuff, that care about uh, mana that la your opponent's lands could produce. Um, and so y this doesn't count. That colorless mana doesn't count as something that your land can produce. Um, so, okay. Next is uh, Grenade. Grenade must have three different targets. It could be three players, three creatures, or some combination. Yeah, we talked a little bit about that. You have to make sure you have enough targets to use Grenade. Deadly Inflation, um, hybrid symbol that is both green and another type is a green mana symbol regardless of what cost is paid. So this in, in the modern sense you have these hybrid manas, um, if you have like a gruel mana symbol which is green and red, can be paid with either green or red, it counts as green. So even if they pay for that with red, this still adds a double green to that cost. And it says this is an additional cost, it doesn't actually add mana symbols to the casting cost which is important for cards that care about casting costs. Okay, Mimic has a lot. Uh, I'm just going to read these uh, out loud. 
Mimic copies the printed values on the chosen permanent plus any copy effects that have been applied to it. It won't copy counters on that permanent or effects that have changed its types, color, or so on. When Mimic switches creatures, the creature it used to be is not considered to have left the battlefield. If Mimic copies a permanent that's copying something else, it will become whatever that permanent was copying. If the copied permanent has an effect that triggers when it leaves the battlefield, it will trigger when Mimic leaves the battlefield. So like if it dies, if it actually leaves the battlefield. <clears throat> Damage is not removed when it changes forms. It can switch to the same permanent it is currently a copy of. When it takes on the characteristics of the other card, it retains its creature subtype Shapeshifter. When changing forms, any text changes that exist on the Mimic are applied to the new text if appropriate. So if you magical hack a Mimic, then you magical hack the Mimic permanently even if it changes to a different card uh that has different wording you'd still substitute words as appropriate i'm pretty sure i've been using magical hack and sleight of mind incorrectly i don't remember you know what i'm talking about though you change lands you change colors <clears throat> if mimic is flipped and copies a flip card in any state it will copy both sides of that card but use the flipped side if mimic is unflipped and its copies flip uh, copies a flip card in any state it will copy both sides of the card but use the unflipped side in the second case if it ever meets the flip conditions of its new ability it will flip and use the flip side of what it's copying so this is to make this card work with like the innistrad flip cards i think that have a front and a back like ravager what's the guy's name the the good one the the red green guy ravager of the fells i think um and maybe it also applies to morph creatures i'm not fully sure um but anyways, we don't have to worry about this for old school. When Mimic's ability, triggered ability triggers, you must choose a target for it. You determine whether to have Mimic become of that a copy of that target when the ability resolves. So that's just a technicality. I don't know when that would maybe come up. But you do have to choose something, and then you, you choose target something, and then you can choose not to have it copy that when the, the ability resolves. Mimic copies the mana cost of the permanent it's copying, but it doesn't copy its color. If another creature copies Mimic, the new creature will become a copy of whatever Mimic is copying, except it will be a blue 2-4 creature with Mimic's triggered ability. So, if Mimic is copying an artifact, then you can use Copy Artifact, Target Mimic, to make a copy of whatever Mimic is copying, and also the creature's a blue 2-4 creature. So maybe that's like a way that that goes into some deck um, because this costs seven, but now you can make more copies of it for a colorless and a blue. Anyway, that's kind of interesting. Although Mimic's triggered ability is targeted, it's as it enters the battlefield ability is not. So when it enters the battlefield, you can choose something that has shroud or hexproof on it. Um, cool. I guess that could that could come up at some point. Maybe uh, they've got a um, I don't know what they'd have. Uh, and the last one for Barry's Land. Barry's Land is a basic land, but it doesn't have a basic land type. If you tap it, it will make one colorless mana. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about that. Um, cool, so that's the pack. I think now the last thing I would say is just like, if we were going to brew something with these cards, what cards, what would we do? Well, I think Blessed Land is maybe the best card in the pack. Um, so let's start with that for a white deck. Uh, I would say Crimson Acolyte can go on the sideboard. Psionic Surge is pretty good. Um, Convert Land seems good. I think we're building a blue-white thing here. Um, let's throw a Mimic in, just for fun. Okay, we're going to ramp it out with Blessed Land, right? It's not a problem. Um, and then I don't know if Illusion finds a home in there or not. Why not? It can go into some sort of removal. It's a fun card. So, like, I think with this, maybe we would build something that's, like, um, blue-white skies. Uh, I think we probably would lean hard on this blessed land. We'd want four of those. We would put in Sarah Angels and Motes. Um, put in some Swords and some Disenchants. Uh, dibs, Psy Blasts, a couple Psionic Surges. I don't know if there's room for these. Some Counter Spells. Um, you know, kind of the standard package there. But, but I really think... I think two things, I think. I think Blessed Land is big is a big deal for ramping stuff out. Being able to get that Sarah Angel or that Moat down one turn earlier can be great. Um, the 
uh, it, maybe there's a little bit, if we're playing a moat deck, we're leaving a little bit of value on the table by not being able to play Blessed Land on a Mishra's Factory and do much with it. But um, people disenchant moats and stuff, you still end up using your factories in, in, in that deck sometimes. And then Psionic Surge just for the reach and for clearing the skies. Like, uh, against these skies decks, sometimes people do stuff like they board in Shivan Dragons and they're like, haha, nice Sarah Angel. Uh, I've got a Shivan Dragon, and then you can be like, well, haha, nice Shivan Dragon, I've got a Psionic Surge. Um, or you just hit them with the, for the reach, you know, you pop them for five to the dome and win that way. So, all right, so that's it, that's the pack. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I think Mike is planning on posting some, some more information about these cards now that they've been spoiled too, so check, check his, uh, social media feeds for that, and, uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.